We're now on page three of your workbook, and I want to talk a little bit about a differential diagnosis because this is very important um, when we talk about assessing any patient, uh, and particularly in relationship to a diagnostic tool such as 12 lead ECG, because the 12 lead ECG, like any other diagnostic tool, is an adjunct to your overall assessment. So um, whenever assessing a patient, we need to arrive at a differential diagnosis. And a differential diagnosis is simply a short list of conditions that would fit with the signs and symptoms that your patient presents with. And important to bear in mind that only about 10% of patients who present to the emergency department with sy symptoms consistent with cardiac ischemia are having an acute myocardial infarction. So that's a pretty small percentage. That means that um, a, the other 90% uh, may fall under you know, the category of angina or uh, pleurisy or pulmonary embolus or any one of a number of other conditions. So um, let's talk about uh, perhaps a, a fairly long list of things that might fall into that differential diagnosis. So um, your patient may be presenting with um, angina pectoris, uh, aortic valvular disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, mitral valve prolapse. And so, for example, uh, part of your assessment might involve um, auscultating for heart sounds. Now, I don't advocate that paramedics uh, become really proficient at auscultating heart sounds. Um, sorry, I meant to uh, put a star here. Uh, but whenever we we're presented with a patient who's short of breath or is having uh, chest discomfort, we should be auscultating heart sounds so at least we recognize some of the basic abnormalities like uh, a murmur uh, and, and without necessarily uh, knowing specifics about the type of murmur we're, we're encountering. Now, when we look at something like an acute aortic dissection, uh, as a routine with anyone who presents with chest discomfort, especially if it's tearing in nature and radiates to the back and is radiating to the back and migrating downwards, we should be auscultating blood pressures on both sides, both arms, that is, um, to ensure that the blood pressures are the same. If there's a difference of blood pressure between the two arms, a difference is systolic of 15 millimeters of mercury or greater, that's considered significant, and that may be associated with an acute thoracic aortic dissection that's dissecting into one of the subclavian arteries. So that should be done routinely. Um, thoracic aortic aneurysm is another example, myocarditis and um, uh, pericarditis. Um, so in our history, we're looking for things like uh, recent history of uh, fever or flu, um, any kind of recent infection. It's not uncommon for patients four to six weeks post myocardial infarction to develop pericarditis, so that's something to consider. When we look at something like uh, pneumonia, we want to, again, you know, determine whether it was a recent history of cough or fever, auscultate lung sounds, is there any uh, adventitious breath sounds that would suggest a pneumonia. Uh, pleurisy is another thing that might mimic myocardial infarction, neoplasms, cholecystitis, uh, GI bleeds uh, may present similarly to acute myocardial infarct. And it's also possible that someone, for example, who's got a GI bleed who is hypovolemic may experience coronary ischemia because of blood loss. So they may have a GI bleed and uh, also be having myocardial ischemia. Uh, but anyone who presents with abdominal discomfort may also be having an infarct. So um, the purpose of going through uh, a long list like this um, is to uh, critically think about whether your patient is actually infarcting or not. And this is where the 12 lead uh, plays an important role. So uh, we do a thorough assessment of our patient and the 12 lead if the patient is having signs and symptoms consistent with myocardial infarction and they have an electrocardiogram which is showing signs consistent with myocardial infarction, then the specificity of the electrocardiogram is almost 100%. But again, uh, it's critically important that we um, not make the mistake of looking at a patient's signs and symptoms and just automatically jump to the conclusion that they're having an infarct. It's important to create a mental checklist, and that's the differential diagnosis.